Welcome to a night in New York City. Follow along as we drive through downtown New York. Check out all of the exciting things to do and see along the way. Our tour kicks off near Columbus Circle, just outside of Central Park. The famous Columbus Circle holds a 76-foot monument at the center. At the top of this monument, there is a statue of Columbus. The circle is the traditional zero-mile point from which city distances are measured. The person who designed the monument was an Italian sculptor named Gaetano Russo. The circle was built in 1912 as the headquarters of U.S. Rubber. It was renovated in the 1990s and 2000s. It's usually pretty hot in the circle. At the time of writing this, it is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature in July is 77.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperature ever observed in the area was 106 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lowest was negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The circle is located at the main entrance of Central Park. The monument itself was actually built in 1892. Columbus Circle gets over 16 million visitors every year, pre-COVID. Now, the number fell during COVID, but it is rapidly climbing. There are many attractions near Columbus Circle. This includes hotels, shops, a museum, Riverside Park, etc. It's quite fun. Since Columbus Circle is very, very hot, you shouldn't really bring thick clothes most times of the year. In 1904, due to the very high speeds of cars going through the circle, the NYPD added tightly spaced electric lights on the inner side of the circle, which surrounded the column. This was called Eno's Traffic Plan. The circle was designed as part of Friedrich Law Olmsted's 1857 vision for Central Park. You're almost at the area where the Late Show with Stephen Colbert is hosted. It first premiered September 8th 2015. It is taped at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Now, the show was at home for most of COVID, but it started being filmed at the theater again on June 14th. The show was hosted by David Letterman from 1993 till 2015. The Ed Sullivan Theater was opened in 1927. It closed in 1992 and reopened in 1993. It was built by Arthur Hammerstein between 1925 and 1927. 
It was originally named Hammerstein's Theater. It later went by the names first Manhattan Theater, Billy Rose's Music Hall, and then Manhattan again. In the 1930s, it became a nightclub. The building was designed by Herbert J. Krapp. The theater served as a stage for the Rosie O'Donnell Show for a week in October 1996. The theater has hosted concerts for many musicals. This includes the Dave Matthews Band on July 15, 2002, Audio Slave on November 25, 2002, Paul McCartney on July 15, 2009, Fish on June 21, 2004, and Eminem and Jay-Z in June 2010. The theater was built in the neo-Gothic style. Soon, we will reach Times Square, 47th Street. It is an east-west running street between 1st Avenue and the West Side Highway. It was first commissioned March 1811. It features the Diamond District. It is 1.8 miles in length, or 2.9 kilometers. 47th Street was designed by Ishmael Leva Architects. The Diamond District began in 1795 in Maiden Lane. There, diamond merchants established a place to sell diamonds. 47th Street became significant because when wealthy banks went downtown, the diamond business started moving uptown to 47th Street. As refugee diamond merchants fled to New York during World War II, 47th Street became significant. 47th Street has been referenced in popular culture quite a few times. This includes references to the Diamond District in Cardi B's song, I Like It. It was also seen in the film Marathon Man in 1976. There were around 3,500 independent businesses in the Diamond District in 2019. A notable anomaly of the district was Gotham Bookmart, a bookstore which operated from 1920 to 2004. 
The store was opened by Francis Stelloff on January 1st, 1920. 47th Street is maintained by NYC DOT, or the New York City Department of Transportation. According to the New York Times, the Diamond District has maintained a thriving, bazaar-like marketplace since the 20s. Many deals are finalized by just a traditional blessing and a handshake. One distinguishing feature of the district is the unique diamond motif streetlights. The Diamond District holds three important trade interconnected buildings. This includes the 580 Fifth Avenue Exchange, the DDC, or Diamond Dealers Club, and the International Gem Tower. North of 47th Street is 48th Street, and south of it is 46th Street. Broadway theater is well represented on 47th Street. Up ahead is Times Square, 42nd Street. Forty Second Street is a major crosstown street. It is known for theaters. It is two miles in length, or three point two kilometers. It was first commissioned March eighteen eleven. Ahead is the ball drop. Here, on New Year's, a time ball descends down a special flagpole. Now we have arrived at the Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe is a restaurant chain themed with rock and roll memorabilia. Hard Rock Cafe has Lionel Messi, a soccer or football player, as their brand ambassador.
The first Hard Rock Cafe opened in 1971 at Old Park Lane in Mayfair, London. Up ahead, after Macy's, we'll arrive at Herald Square. Herald Square is named after New York Herald, a now defunct newspaper which used to be headquartered there. In Herald Square, there is a monument of James Gordon Bennett. James Gordon Bennett is the founder of the previously mentioned New York Herald. Herald Square is a major commercial intersection. Herald Square was built in 1902. The square contains a huge mechanical clock, which was constructed in 1895. Herald Square will soon be getting a renovation. The area around Herald Square is a retail hub. The most notable attraction is Macy's Herald Square. Since 1992, Herald Square has been cared for by the 34th Street Partnership. The old New York Herald building was located on the square. The 34th Street Partnership provides sanitary and security services. Many songs refer to Herald Square. This includes Give My Regards to Broadway, 1904 by George M. Cohen, Andrew B. Sterling's and Harry Von Tilzer's song, Take Me Back to New York Town, 1907. Billy Joel's song, Rosalinda's Eyes, 1978. And Freedy Johnston's song, Bad Reputation, 1994. Herald Square is the terminus for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, broadcast nationally by NBC TV. The area is served by New York City Subway's 34th Street Herald Square Station. In 2007, Macy's moved its headquarters to Macy's Herald Square. It is the largest Macy's store in the U.S.
As we are leaving Herald Square, we are near Penn Station. Penn Station is the main inner city railroad station in New York City. And it is the most busy transportation facility in the West. If you look to our left, you will soon see the Port Authority Bus Terminal 42nd. Port Authority is a bus terminal serving interstate buses traveling into Manhattan. It serves over 65 million people every year. If you look up, you will see a Regal Theater. As you can see, 
directly across from it is an AMC theater. We are currently driving near the Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. The Wax Museum has numerous wax sculptures of famous celebrities. This museum is mostly focused on pretend play with celebrities and well-known figures. Madame Tussauds was founded by Marie Tussaud. It opened in New York recently, November 15th, 2000. The building itself is over 85,000 square feet large. A typical trip through Madame Tussauds is around 60 to 90 minutes. Madame Tussauds has over 220 wax statues. Madame Tussauds attracts over 2.5 million visitors each year. And it has attracted 500 million people since the first one opened in 1835. Madame Tussauds was taught by Felipe Curtius how to sculpt. Around 1835, Marie settled in Baker Street, London. She opened a museum there which was called Madame Tussauds. When Madame Tussauds was reopening due to COVID-19, it went to a 25% capacity limit. Madame Tussauds has been owned by Merlin Entertainments since 2007. Some notable figures include Pharrell Williams, Selena Gomez, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jodie Foster, Muhammad Ali, Abraham Lincoln, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Ronald Reagan, and Albert Einstein. The inside of Madame Tussauds is air-conditioned, but it isn't very cold. It is ideally 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now generally, the best time to go is uh, Mondays or Tuesdays. And this is because the crowd is much, much smaller. Madame Tussauds opens at 11 a.m. and closes at 7 p.m. And apparently, celebrities aren't paid to be reproduced in wax. Most stars seem to enjoy being measured and photographed for their wax statue. There is no dress code for Madame Tussauds. Madame Tussauds has many locations. To be precise, there are 21 locations. There are six museums in the USA. Marie Tussauds, the founder of Madame Tussauds, was featured in the video game Assassin's Creed Unity. She was in a side mission where the player is tasked with retrieving something that Madame Tussauds was commissioned to make replicas of. Madame Tussauds is referenced in the Sherlock Holmes story, The Mazarin Stone. Madame Tussauds is referenced in Gilbert and Sullivan's song, My Object All Sublime, 1885. 
In July 2008, Madame Tussauds Berlin was in the center of controversy after a 41-year-old man decapitated a wax figure of Adolf Hitler. One of the first main attractions of Madame Tussauds was the Chamber of Horrors. Marie Tussaud was born as Marie Gauchotz in 1761 in Strasbourg, France. Her mom worked for Felipe Curtius in Bern, Switzerland. Felipe Curtius was a physician skilled in wax modeling. Curtius taught Tussaud wax modeling when she was a child. He moved to Paris and took his six-year-old apprentice with him. Tussaud created her first wax sculpture in 1777 of Voltaire. At 17, she became the art tutor to Madame Elizabeth. Madame Elizabeth was the sister of King Louis XVI of France. During the French Revolution, she was imprisoned for three months and awaiting execution. However, she was released after the intervention of a friend. During the revolution, she made models of many victims. Tussaud inherited Curtius' models after he died. For the next 33 years, she traveled around Europe with a few models from the collection. She married Francois Tussaud in 1795 and took his surname. She was unable to return to France because of the Napoleonic Wars, so she traveled through Britain and Ireland, exhibiting her collection. In 1831, she took a series of short leases on Baker Street Bazaar. This became her permanent home in 1836. Some sculptures still exist that were made by Marie Tussaud herself. But fire damage in 1925 and German bombs in 1941 damaged most of her older models. The cast themselves have survived, so the waxworks were remade. The oldest figure on display is that of Madame du Barry. It's the work of Curtius, and it's called The Sleeping Beauty. It is the oldest waxwork in the world. Soon, we will arrive at Pershing Square. Pershing Square was named after John J. Pershing. It was meant to honor J.J. Pershing. It was created in 1921. It was originally intended to be an open plaza in Pershing's honor. In 1995, the city had plans to restore the space at the cost of $2 million and then lease it as a restaurant. The Pershing Square Building is a 25-story office building around Pershing Square. It is 363 feet tall. It was designed in the Romanesque Revival style. 
There are many restaurants near Pershing Square. During World War II, the square was actually used by United Service Organizations, or USO. After the war, it became an outpost of the New York Convention and Visitors Bureau. There are two other major buildings near Pershing Square. They are 110 East 42nd Street and the Chainin Building. The space under the viaduct between 41st and 42nd Streets was used as a trolley barn. In 1989, the Grand Central Partnership proposed to turn the space under the viaduct into a restaurant. The owner of the renovated space, Michael O'Keefe, placed so much attention to the renovation that the project costs increased from $2 million to $5 million. Pershing Square is typically hot. It hits highs of 86 degrees Fahrenheit and lows of 63 degrees Fahrenheit. There are a few job opportunities in Pershing Square. At the time of writing this, there's a job called Director of Marketing and Audience Services, which is available via Pipeline Labs. What would be the first place you would like to go to near Pershing Square? Do you think Pershing Square is a worthwhile area to visit? Would you rather visit Pershing Square or Herald Square? Shortly after the opening of the Park Avenue Viaduct in 1919, the area at the bottom of the viaduct was renamed for Pershing. The former Grand Union Hotel space was proposed for use as an open plaza with a three-story memorial called Victory Hall. The idea of a Victory Hall was opposed by Fiorello H. LaGuardia, president of the New York City Board of Aldermen. Now, the Transit Commission attempted to sell the building site in May of 1920 for $2.8 million which is the equivalent of $27.5 million in 2019. But no one placed a bid. As we near the end of the tour, I would like to talk about Manhattan Island as a whole. Manhattan is known as the urban core of the New York metropolitan area. It is the most densely populated and smallest in size of the five boroughs of New York City. Manhattan is New York City's birthplace. It has been described as the capital of the world. Manhattan is home to the world's two largest stock exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Manhattan traces its origins to a trading post founded by colonists from the Dutch Republic in 1624 on Lower Manhattan. The trading post was named New Amsterdam in 1626. The territory and its surroundings came under English control in 1664, and it was renamed New York after King Charles II of England gave the land to his brother, the Duke of York. Manhattan became a borough during the consolidation of New York City in 1898. Manhattan has the third largest population of New York City's five boroughs and is the smallest borough in terms of land. Manhattan hosts three of the world's 10 most visited tourist attractions in 2013, Times Square, Central Park, and Grand Central Terminal. Manhattan has many important bridges, such as the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, the Queensboro Bridge, the Triborough Bridge, and the George Washington Bridges. 
Manhattan also has a lot of very important skyscrapers, such as the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and the One World Trade Center, or Freedom Tower. It also hosts many parks, such as Central Park. New York City was founded at the southern tip of Manhattan. The area that is now Manhattan used to be inhabited by Lenape and Wappinger Indians. In 1524, Giovanni de Verrazzano became the first European to visit the area that is New York City today. However, it was not until the voyage of Henry Hudson that the area was mapped. Hudson came across Manhattan in 1609 and continued up the Hudson River until he arrived to what is now Albany. According to a letter by Peter Janson Shagan, Peter Menu and Dutch colonists acquired Manhattan on May 24, 1626 from native people who are believed to be Canarse Indians. The Dutch acquired Manhattan in exchange for traded goods worth 60 guilders, which was 24 US dollars at the time. Yeah, you heard that right. Manhattan Island was sold for 24 US dollars. With inflation, that's worth around $1,000 today. In 1674, the English bought New Netherland and renamed it New York. Manhattan was at the heart of the New York Campaign, which was a series of major battles in the early American Revolutionary War. New York grew as an economic center with two main causes. First, the result of Alexander Hamilton's policies and practices as the first Secretary of the Treasury. And then second, the opening of the Erie Canal in 1825, which connected the Atlantic port to the agricultural markets between the Midwestern US and Canada. Now, New York City played a complex role in the American Civil War. The city had strong commercial ties to the Southern US due to the trading power of the Hudson River and many other reasons. Now, after the Civil War, Manhattan became the first stop for millions of people who were looking for a new life in the U.S. This role was acknowledged by the dedicated Statue of Liberty, a gift from France. In 1898, New York City was consolidated with three neighboring counties to form the city of Greater New York. The construction of the New York City subway, which opened in 1904, helped bind the new city together, as did new bridges. Returning World War II vets created a post-war economic boom, which led to the development of huge housing developments targeted at returning veterans. The largest being Peter Cooper Village or Stuyvesant Town. We're about to arrive at the MetLife building. The MetLife building is an 808-foot-tall skyscraper. It is one of the largest buildings in the U.S.
Up ahead is the Grand Central Terminal. It was named and built for the New York Central Railroad. It opened in 1913. It was built on the site of two similar stations, which date back to 1871. It is one of the world's 10 most visited tourist attractions. It is the third busiest train station in North America. It covers 48 acres and it has 44 platforms, which is more than any other railroad station in the world. GCT, or Grand Central Terminal, has over 750,000 visitors every day. It was designed by Bow Art Style by Reed and Stem. The ceiling is 12 stories high. Now the building was intended to compete with the now demolished Pennsylvania Station. The Grand Central Terminal was built to handle 200 trains per hour, though real traffic never came close to that number. It originally had 46 tracks and 30 platforms. In 1978, architect Philip Johnson and First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis campaigned to secure landmark status for the terminal. This ensured that the building would serve New Yorkers for many more years. We are pulling up to our final destination, the New York Public Library. The New York Public Library, or NYPL, is a massive library with nearly 53 million items.